Hey guys, so this is the tutorial I'm putting together for the MIDI mapping functionality in Max 8. Um, as you can see, we've got a little um, MIDI controller down here that we can look at so we can see the changes I'm making in real time, and then also this Max patch up here. Um, and the MIDI mapping is basically a way for you to be able to take any MIDI controller that you might have or check out from the equipment room and quickly map any of the uh, knobs or sliders or buttons to any of the GUI objects in Max. And I kind of put together a few of the most common ones. They're probably going to be things that you're going to be using for your own Max patches. Um, but basically, just to start us off, like I have this plugged in. It's a launch control uh, XL from a company called Novation. Uh, there's lots of variations of this. I found it to be a pretty robust um, MIDI controller and it's uh, pretty user friendly. Um, but what we want to do is I want to be able to take the ability to take like this dial and this fader and this button and map it so that it's uh, connected to here. So the way we're going to start that is actually down at the bottom here we have this assign MIDI map button right here and basically what happens is while our MIDI controller is plugged in if we click on this assigned MIDI map, anything that's visible to our MIDI controller will have this kind of, it'll be grayed out to start, but it has this pink box around it, almost like a like pink patch cords uh, surrounding it. And what we can do is we can enable them to listen for a mapping. So if I click on this integer here and say enable for mapping, now it has a full purple box around it and it's not grayed out anymore. And this currently means that it's a, in a listening state. Um, so the way this works is whatever one we have highlighted and selected while we're in this MIDI mapping mode, um, if I move any of these dials, it'll automatically connect it to this. So just as an example, I'll take this upper left corner right here and since this is selected and it's listening, if I move it, it automatically connects. And then if I turned off MIDI mapping mode, anything else I move doesn't do anything. But this one's now connected to that. Conversely, to get to the rest of them, I go back into MIDI map, and let's just go ahead and enable a couple of them all at a time. And just so you understand what's happening here is whichever one is selected is the one that's listening. So now if I have this selected and I do the second knob, here we have that. And then let's say that we do the dial for the third one. And then the slider for this one. That's all kind of lines up and matches up correctly. And now we've got everything connected along this side. What you have to be careful for though is if you're in MIDI mapping mode, and let's say I do the slider right here, but I forget to move it or I just touch any other part of this. Now you can see it's continuing to listen. So it's no longer connected to this. Now it's connected to this third dial, but this dial is also connected from our previous mapping we did. So it's possible to have multiple mappings on top of each other, which is not something you want. It'll get confusing really quickly. Um, and actually, now that if I take it back out, this is no longer connected to the slider. We've overridden it so that this third knob is now doing both of these. So I would have to go back into MIDI mode, select the slider, and get it to listen to the slider again. Um, so it's just something you need to be aware of that you're going to have to take it slow. You're going to like, you know, really figure this out. But luckily, you're not completely on your own with this. Uh, you don't have to just remember off the top of your head. Once you've mapped something, there's something over on the right here that says Show Mappings. And you can see here, this is kind of a layout of all the mappings we've done so far. This first one being this first dial, the second one being uh, the second dial the third one being the third dial, and I believe then this one being the slider. Um, and we're just going to kind of touch base on what all these different things are. Uh, 
First off is the parameter. This is kind of confusing. You can see I already, I forgot to erase something I was doing while I was preparing for this tutorial, tutorial but this brightness slider is a lot more uh, descriptive of what we have than number, number one, and dial. And that's because I actually gave it a name. And it's not something, I, even I can double click here and type, this isn't the location, you can see it reverts back, this isn't the location where I actually make that change. Um, this is a bit annoying and you'll see, I think it's actually kind of a design flaw of this whole system. Remember it's pretty new. Uh, if I actually select this integer box right here and go to inspector, down under parameter there's a long name and a short name. Now, I, don't ask me why with a long name and a short name. All I know is this one specifically is tied to what the parameter is. So I'm going to give that something more descriptive. Like let's say this is connected to, um, I just pull one off the top of my head, contrast. Beautiful. So now I've changed that. The flaw here is that it does not update in our parameter right here. So I'm actually going to go to here and one thing you can do is, there's two ways, you can delete a MIDI mapping or remap it. If I go to assign MIDI map, I can say disable for mapping. Or actually not. Let's see. If I go here, I think this is the better way to do it. There's a remove mapping. And I can get rid of that. I can, in fact, I can get rid of all of these. And you remember, I have to disable mapping here, inspector. This one I've given the name contrast to on the long name. So now if I map it again, it actually comes in as that name. Um, again, I find it completely frustrating and infuriating in some ways that like it doesn't automatically update when you change the name. So this is something you have to do before you go into this. Um, if in case you, if you have so many parameters that things are getting complex, I do recommend doing this ahead of time. You're going to lose track of what's what if everything just number, number one, number two, number three. Those are just the self-assigned names. Uh, so I'm just going to go through and do this again for all of them. So we go to this float, go down here, long name, we'll say this one's saturation. Uh, this slider, we already, I set that to brightness slider dial. Um, we'll see. Now some of you, uh, you may not have parameter mode enabled, like you might just see this. This may be true of some of these more GUI objects. So if you're not seeing the long name, just make sure the parameter mode enable is selected on and it'll give you the rest of this. So for dial, let's just say um, slide dial. And then while we're here, we'll do the, as this is what I was talking about, make sure parameter mode is enabled. Button, uh, trigger, random, oops, sorry, that's the scripting name, I got that one wrong. Toggle. Let's just call that QMetro. On, off. Beautiful. So now I can go back to mappings and maybe I'll just remap everything. Again, it's so it's really simple and easy. Then you just select this, map to here, select this, map to here, select this, map to here. And then actually going into the bang and the toggle, we can do that too. So I'll, I'll do these two buttons down here for the bang right there and the toggle right there. And now this is a lot easier to understand. We can see that. Um, so how do we get it to be the values we want it to be though? Or even just then, let's like, let's take a look at what's happening here. I haven't done anything except to this one, which we'll talk about. Uh, these GUI objects are already mapped to be 0 to 127 as their initial values. Uh, this integer box, however, is not. You remember an integer box, if I make one, I can just put any old number in there. But when I move the dial associated with it that I did the mapping to, it goes 0 to 127. Now, 
This is really important. MIDI only deals with ranges of 0 to 127. That doesn't mean that we can't have this map to a different maximum and a different minimum, but it does mean that in all of these dials, there are only 128 steps. And what do I mean by that? That means kind of the granularity of it. So even if I change this to 0 to 1,000, we won't be able to move this from 0 to 1,000 and see every single number in between. It's going to make jumps. It's going to make jumps based according to 128 steps. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. But like, how do we actually adjust the minimum and the maximum of this? This is also something that we mostly do in mapping, so it'll be a little infuriating when we see it. Uh, you can see here the minimum's easy to understand. We can actually just go in here and say 40. And if I go back and move this, now it's 40 to 127. You can also change this to 60. 40 to 60. Now here's what's frustrating. If I go to 400, it just automatically goes back to 127. Now, I don't know why we have to do this in another place, but again, going back to the instructor, if I unlock here, select this box, I mean the inspector, I think I said instructor there before, but inspector, if I go for this integer box, you can see the range right here. And it's actually already, it automatically locked it to 0 to 127 when I did the mapping. Otherwise it would have been 0 to, I, there may not even been a number there. But all I have to do is just change this number. And like frankly I could change this to this if I wanted. And now this is the range of what's possible to have in this integer box. And what it means is now if I go back, I can change this to 6,000 and 0. So, so that's how you change it so you have the minimum and the maximum. It's annoying that they're the, both the names and the min and the max, you have to bounce back and forth between this inspector and uh, the mapping sidebar. Now, that thing I said about 0 to 127, here's what I mean by that. You can see it's going up to 6,000. But if I move this slowly enough, that it's incrementing, see how it's going 47, 94, 141, 88, 236, 283? This is what I mean. It's going to go from 0 to 6,000 in steps divided by 128, um, which in this case looks like 100, 1 128th of 6,000 is about 47. So, you know, when I move it this quickly, it doesn't seem like it's that much of an issue, but some of the effects you have may need a certain kind of granularity. Um, and you're, you may just need to know that, like, this is not the best way to control something if you need to actually hit all values in between 0 and 6,000. Um, over here on this float, it's 0 to 1,000. I already went in and made that change before I did this as part of the tutorial. Like if I actually go here and go to the int, you can see I changed the range down here. Now with the slider, same issue. We change this to a thousand. And now in here, we can set it to whatever we need to be. Although it looks like, ah. This is a little different, where like, this will work, you can see that it's still the zero, it's 0 to 250 like we have it in the MIDI mapping, but in the inspector, the full range is 1000. So this visually is only going to represent, it's always going to represent the value in here. This will map to the mapping that we gave it, but it's never going to look like it's full. So we just have to go to here and do 250, and now it's the same. And those are just like little quirks that hopefully in time will get fixed or make more sense. But uh, just to keep going along here, uh, there's a couple of things left in this MIDI mapping kind of thing. Exponent, I wouldn't worry about this. Steps, steps is something you might want to think about. If I have 0 to 6,000 for, let's say, but I want it to only go between 100, 200, 300, and 400, I could do, I believe, my math might be off on this, 100 steps, no, 60 steps. It's not, oh right, it would be 600 steps. 
And what it's saying is, no, 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 six depths. <laughs> Sorry, my brain is kind of inverted at the moment. So now that it's zero to 6,000 over six depths, it's 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000. So you can use this min and this max and the steps if you do some basic math to kind of change like how it behaves in a way that fits whatever the parameter you're working with has. Now, the two last things to look at is this bang and this toggle and trigger mode, and then we'll also look at pickup mode. Now the bang, a bang is a momentary thing. When I bang it, this doesn't turn on. This is like a one and then nothing, one, nothing. But you see when I hit the button associated with it, this just hangs there forever. That's because the trigger mode is set to toggle. This isn't going to matter much for the numbers, but for things like this it will. So if I actually go here and say momentary switch, this is more in line with what we need for a bang. You can see now it behaves like a bang should. It's kind of a one-time one thing. Now the toggle actually wants to be in toggle mode. This basically allows us to turn something on, turn something off, turn something on, turn something off. And if we did this as momentary switch, you can see that once we let go of the button, it lets go. And that might actually be something you want to build in. Let's say you have a gate on an effect that you want to be able to hold the button and the effect only happens while you're holding it down and then stops when you let go. That would be a good instance of it. But if you wanted something where it just turns on and you don't have to worry about it until you want to turn it off, then you would want to use the toggle. Now, lastly, pickup mode. You'll notice though, with this float, let's say that's between zero and a thousand, I can move my dial here. Let's say I set it at 196. I can still type a number in here. I can still interact with it the normal way you do in Max. But when I move this dial, it's going to jump very like harshly to whatever the closest number was of where that dial was set before. So it has no memory basically of where it was. Pickup mode is a great way to solve this. When I say pickup mode pickup, now if I move this, let's say all the way down to zero, I'll type in 800. It's not going to affect the value here until it picks up the number. So you can see me moving it right here. Oop, I got that one wrong. That was the brightness slider. Do the thing, it's on zero, type in 800. And I move this, nothing's happening. It's not, gonna ha it's not gonna pick up the number and start changing it until this dial gets to where 800 is. And now it starts to move. And it kinda, so it's kind of like a latch where it latches back on to whatever the value was there. Um, that's all that to say, there's one last thing. I know there's a lot of tiny little annoying details, um, but this is the kind of stuff that's gonna keep you from losing all the work you've done. Uh, you can also save all the mappings to a file. Uh, I only generally do this with like large performances or like really complex patches, uh, but it doesn't hurt to do. It's like a good thing to do as a backup plan. Um, and maybe like the night before your performance, like if you ever have everything ready, this is the kind of thing where you go save and then you could give it a name like performance. And then you could always load back your mappings that way. So if something happens like you accidentally, you right here, remove all mappings, you at least have the ability to bring back all the work that you did before. That's everything for this tutorial. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing your performances uh, this coming week. And uh, yeah, email me as always if you have any questions.